Morning. Hey, everybody. Happy Tuesday afternoon. Happy Tuesday. Hi, Lizanne. Thanks for responding. Hi. Hi. Okay, and I see Jules is smiling. That's positive. There she is with a big smile on her face. That's great. And thank you for those that are actually showing their faces. We know that working from home means that you may actually be hiding a little bit, um, obviously, but uh, for those of you that are willing to share, thank you. Brianna, Brendan, Michael, Courtney, Brad, Fred. Thanks guys, thanks everybody. All right, so we are going to get started here. Feeling that, okay. And we're gonna go over to here to share a screen. Share. Okay, so we're sharing a screen. Can everyone see that? Thumbs up, okay, thank you. Perfect, okay, awesome. All right, so let's get started. We've got celebrations to get started with. And this month, um, there's been a few birthdays. And today in particular, we have Darren Scopus. Happy birthday, Roberta Bandera coming up in two days. And Aaron Quinn has a Halloween birthday, which I feel like is a little fitting for some reason. Uh, and then happy anniversary. We've got anniversaries. So these are the anniversary, your anniversaries with Keller Williams Neighborhood. Michael Cambridge is a year in, Nadia Violo is two years, Rory two years, Laura two years, Daniela has been three years, uh, Diane Leahy five, Erin Quinn seven, and Kat Lubienzi six. Oh, and I miss Joe Bacosi, thank you. I miss Josie, you're there. Three years for Joe Bacosi, so congratulations everyone. Really exciting. So there is a newsletter that comes out from Keller Williams International uh, monthly. Monthly, they send out the newsletter. Yes. And yeah, and let me just do that there. Whoops. Now, there we go. Um, so what's really neat is it tells us where everyone stands within Canada. Um, they do the updates as far as, for instance, top 25 producers for gross commission income and in September we had two of our very own in there so Brianna Hill was number 19 congratulations Brianna and Benjamin Greenhill number 22 congratulations Benjamin and then we also had two teams in the in the group and that is two producing associates uh Parker Advantage Courtney and Rory were number 19 and number 23, the Karen Cooks-Goglin team, Jackie and Fred, congratulations. So that's making the list for Canada, which is really exciting. I'm going to let my partner here take over this section. <laughs> All right, so obviously you guys have seen the Y4C2Ts, although you may see a slight change that has happened. So. Um, with everything going on this year, um, Kelly Williams is actually the first brokerage to adopt uh, equality in their Y4C2Ts. And so they've added the E piece, which is opportunities for all. And there is um, a whole group of individuals that are now working towards ensuring that opportunities are provided to all and that everything is, is provided equally. So really awesome uh, company to be a part of and, and awesome to be a part of this, this interesting year that we're, li we're living through right now. And uh, it's really nice to see that, that the company that we're all a part of uh, has a culture that they adjust and they pivot as Gary calls and, and shift. And so when, when a shift comes, we pivot to ensure that we're in culture. And so, I mean, this is something that I go through on a regular basis with the whole, the whole process of here. Win, win, and no deal is a part of every conversation I have. Integrity, always do the right thing. Customers always come first. Commitment in all things. Communication, seek first to understand. Creativity is ideas before results. Teamwork, together everyone achieves more. Trust begins with honesty. Equality opportunities for all and success results through people. And so I would challenge each of you to think of one of these uh, Y4C2Ts, one of, the, one of these areas that applies to your business for the next week or two weeks, I guess, until we come back here. I'd love to, to have someone maybe share next time we, we jump on these town halls, something that they saw up here in their life. Something that has shown up for them in some way, shape, or form um, that was an opportunity to, uh, to grow. And we can maybe share and we'll fill the bucket. I guess we'll implement something in the next couple of weeks. We'll actually fill the bucket and start to uh, say how one individual was helping someone else through, through the culture that we have in our company. 
Awesome. Thanks, John. Okay, so Mark, are you on the call right now? I am. There I you made are. It here. Yes. Hello. This is your corner. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, for those of you who have not met me, hi, I'm Mark Kadeski. I'm here to help you with any questions you may have in your regular day to day practice. And I wanted to just talk about a couple things today that I'm seeing that can cause some issues for you, for all of us, if, if we're not careful. First of all, uh, if if any of you does business sort of uh, outside the, well, I don't know if you'd call it GTA Hamilton and then further towards St. Catharines in that area, you tend to see quite a few mere postings and you see them within the GTA as well. And I want to be clear on a couple of things. First of all, a mere posting, if you saw the property on Stratus, on MLS, or on realtor.ca, if you know maybe your client told you about something out of town and you're not a member of the St. Catharines board or whatever, and you found it on realtor.ca, the only way it got there is that it's listed. And listed by definition means representation, which means that is a listing. Okay, so to make ourselves very clear, you may not contact the seller directly because you're prohibited from the, uh, by the Real Estate and Business Brokers Act from doing so, unless you've got written instructions from the listing brokerage to contact the seller directly, okay? And it will, how you'll know is it'll tell you in their marks for brokerages that you should contact them directly because with their mere postings, there are different levels of service. The brokerage may do absolutely nothing other than put it on MLS. Uh, which means the seller, you have to contact them to book appointments, all offers go through the sellers, et cetera, et cetera. Or there may be a different level of service where the brokerage actually does do more for them, like having the uh, listings go through them, uh, excuse me, the appointments go through them and offers. Okay, so you have to read very carefully to make sure that you don't get yourself into trouble with RICO. That's number one. Number two, there is a form that you, in most cases, should be using. Oh, I'm not allowed to, I can't share my screen, but it's form 202. And that's a form that's commission agreement for listed property. In most cases with the mere postings, you'll see that down at the bottom, they're gonna pay you because they're required according to board rules to offer remuneration, <coughs> excuse me but it doesn't say how much. So they might offer you one or $2, that's coming from the listing brokerage. But the real money is coming from the seller. So you've got to make a commission agreement with the seller, again, provided you've got permission from the listing brokerage to do that. And I would, even before I showed the property, get that form 202 signed so you don't run into aggravation later on when your client likes it, and then the seller tells you they're only prepared to pay you one point or something like that which means your buyer's gonna to have to come up with the rest and they're not gonna like that if you've got your BRA signed, which by the way, makes it even more important to get your BRA signed ahead of time, okay? That way uh, there's, a, uh, there's a commitment for commission pay, uh, payable to you. All right, now, um, all right, so that's it as far as mere postings. Any questions? No, okay. S another thing that I have seen lately is in the chattel section, for example, uh, agents put as per MLS listing. I think that's dangerous because things can change. There can be misunderstandings. It's always better to spell it out in the offer itself as to what is included and don't put S slash S, spell it out in full. Again, we don't wanna have any misunderstandings where our buyer moves in, and they're not getting what they expected to get and what you told them they were getting. Uh, and then the seller says, no, no, that's not part of the agreement because there can be misunderstandings there. Spell it out in full, whether it's the chattels, whether it's the legal description, whether it's anything else, okay? Uh, the other thing with respect to chattels is uh, for fixtures, for rental items, I think it's imperative that we all ask our sellers is your hot water tank, your furnace, your air conditioning, your alarm system, is it owned, is it rented, and is it, or is it rent to own? Rent to own and rented is two completely different things. And uh, you need to make sure that they can be assumed, those rental contracts, and if it's rent to own, 
you may find yourself buying for the buyers when it's your listing, you may end up having to fork out money because you didn't ask your seller the question. If you don't put into the agreement there uh, that the that these things are rent to own and that the buyer agrees to assume them, then the buyer does not have to assume them. And if it's rent to own, they're generally not transferable, which means the seller has to pay it out in full before they trans before the closing, which means they didn't know that it probably means you're going to have to pay for it. Okay. And I've seen that happen many times. So please be very careful. Very careful. Uh, any questions about that? Okay. Um, up until a couple weeks ago, we had to call ourselves salesperson, sales representatives, real estate salespersons, real estate sales representatives, broker or real estate broker. That's it. That's all. We did call ourselves agents, but according to the act, it was not allowed because the brokerage is the agent. But now, joy of joys, we can actually call ourselves agents. So I just wanted to let you know about that. Um, if you're a broker, you have to put a broker agent or broker real estate agent. Okay. So Mark, just quickly yep. there. So it can now say Adrian Farquhar agent. Well, I, Adrian, are you a broker? No. Okay, so then yes, you can put that. So and instead of also, sales representative that I've had all along, it can now say agent. It can, and you can also use realtor, but be careful when you use realtor that you use that little trademark doohickey at the end of it. And there, there's a way actually to type that on your keyboard. I don't know how to do it, but I know there's a way to do it. Okay. Um, uh, okay, last thing, well, two more things I wanted to mention. One is, if you are doing an, an amendment and let's say you're on the buyer's side and let's say you've negotiated that uh, as a result of the inspection report, the seller is going to abate the price by $5,000 or agree to make certain repairs. And by the way, I would always opt for the abatement and let your buyer do the repairs. At least they know what they're getting. If you let the seller do it, you're probably gonna get garbage for repairs. That's another story. The point of is that if you are going to do an amendment, it's imperative that the irrevocable on the amendment is well in advance of the condition expiry time. Because if the amendment gets signed after the expiry of the conditions, you're amending a dead deal, which doesn't help anybody. Okay, so please remember your deal is dead if the amendment, well, it's not... If the condition doesn't get removed before the condition expires because you didn't get the amendment done, your deal is dead. So if the seller decides last second, no, I don't agree, I'm not going to do it, your buyer still has the opportunity to waive the condition if they want to proceed, notwithstanding that they didn't get what they wanted from the seller. Okay, so just to be clear, if it's still during the conditional period, the amendment, if it affects the conditions, has to be signed by both parties, agreed by both parties before the condition expires. Then you can go ahead and waive your waive or fulfill your condition. Okay, any questions about that? Okay. Last thing is rule 108. Uh, this is a TREB rule. I'm on the professional standards hearing committee uh, at TREB and these things come up on a regular basis. They're really, really cracking down now on, I can say agents who are circumventing the TREB system by doing things like not indicating that it's a link if it is or calling it a freehold property when it's not or not mentioning that it is a parcel of tied land or anything like that. So anything that you are doing to sort of circumvent the system so that your seller ends up getting more money as a result of a misclassification, or if you're putting things on MLS that really are not for sale, like it's sold already, and then you put it on there and then you remove it immediately, that's problematic as well. And you're going to get whacked. You're going to get found out and you're going to get whacked. And they've just increased the fines, I think, to uh, Adrian. Do you remember what it was? It was more than 500 bucks, right? It, it, I believe it is $500, the fine. Yeah, it's 500. And if the brokerage also gets fined, then I'm not sure how your contracts read, but probably you have to pay the brokerages too. 
So behave yourselves is the point. Okay. Uh, any questions about that? All right. If you do have any questions, oh, Mark, yeah, I do yeah. have a quick question. Mm -hmm. I had an incident early this year where there was a listing down the street from mine. The houses looked identical, and they misrepresented the square footage of the house, like drastically, like by a thousand square feet. Mm -hmm. I made complaints. I did it in a whole bunch of different ways. I have never heard anything. My sellers were livid. So is it not up to Treb to actually get back to the person who makes the complaint and say, this is how it was resolved? No, you have to ask to be, uh, to be kept in, to, to find out what the result is. Otherwise, my, as far as I remember, they don't tell you unless you ask them to tell you. Well, I did. I sent so many emails saying, please, mm -hmm. you know, let me know the status. Please let me know the status. I never heard mm -hmm. crickets. I've got, I'm sorry, because the screen is being shared, I don't see the whole gallery. I don't know who's speaking now. Oh, it's Lizanne. Oh, hi, Lizanne. Okay, hi, thanks. Mark. Hi. Um, I've got another hearing on the 9th of November. Uh, so I'm going to ask what the story okay. is. With and how if you can... want, I can forward you the emails and stuff from way back when, because I don't, it was it actually, the other issue was it was the Oakville board too. It was no Oakville property. Uh, so that I can't help you with, unfortunately. I don't know what their policies are. Okay, because I think I put the, because it was listed on both Treb and Oakville, I put it through the Treb board, so I don't Oh, know you did? I, yeah, I did. Okay. Because okay. it was listed on Treb, so I put it through the Treb board, but it was an Oakville listing. Okay, so that's fine. If it was on Treb also, then I'll, then I'll uh, try Okay, I'll forward you the stuff after. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, any other uh, burning questions while, while we're here? All right, please remember, if you do have anything at any time, I'm always available and I'm happy to help any way I can. So it's 416-707-1626, uh, or you can email me at mark at ask-mark.ca. Okay, thanks, Adrian and Dylan. Thanks, Mark, that was awesome, great. I'm just gonna go back to sharing our screen here, which is that one, thank you. Okay, perfect. Super. So uh, profit share, I think we shared this number at our last meeting, but just um, we get it monthly, basically. So we won't have October's numbers until um, until November. But for September, we did profit share $24,320.11. And the reason we put this here, obviously, is to, um, one, share the success of that, um, and two, uh, remind you, um, as we move into business planning season, to be putting down um, building your profit share tree as part of one of your goals for the year, which we'll get into further and talk about more then. But basically, when you see this number, you should be asking yourself the question, how much of that $24,000 went into my pocket, for instance? Um, and if it wasn't very much, you might start wondering how to start doing that and how to get into your pocket. So we wanted to just have a little uh, a slide on command, and we're going to have one each time. And basically, we want command to be something that also, too, as far as your business planning for 2021, is at the forefront of um, how you're running your business, incorporating command into your business, and helping it grow and work for you and your businesses. And so we wanted to play this little video for you. It's just a really quick one.
shade we're not okay so how how how, how cool was that eh, guys like i know it was a real quick snippet of so many things that you can do on there um and the opportunities are, are so much greater and again um as we move into 2021 and business planning over the next um a month uh, command will be a big part of, of the focus of doing that as well as here internally at the office as well. Um, so if Hi, you're... Tony Hughes here with EXP oh, Realty in Scottsdale, Arizona. This one you know, uh, many of my friends yeah. know that I was oh, a God. team leader with Keller Williams Realty for the last three and a half years. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm on Safari though, aren't I? Yeah, it's here there we go. Sorry, guys. I think okay. it's right. There we go, guys. Sorry. You too. My goodness. It just takes hold, eh? As soon as you're in for one video, look out. It's like they've got you. <laughs> Anyways, command. It's pretty awesome and neat stuff coming down the shoot on that. So speaking of which, I've mentioned it a few times now. I think you heard me say business planning a few times. Um, we were talking this morning if anyone witnessed our mime this morning we went on to facebook live and did a uh a 10 minute mime on business planning so if you didn't hear what we were saying it's because there was no volume so <laughs> a little tech glitch this morning those things happen uh but um we do have coming up glenn mcqueenie we've um we've hired glenn mcqueenie to come in and do a specific business planning training clinic with our office and we're just securing the date right now based on his time frame and what we've got available, but it's going to be um, within the next three weeks. So please stay tuned for that. Uh, for those of you that have heard Glenn speak before, he's a fantastic speaker, very engaging. Uh, the time will fly by and it will give you a very good framework for business planning for 2021. And I just want to go back to here for a minute. Thank you. Oh, that's okay. Oh, there's Mark there. Um, do, 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 do. There we go. So that was this one here, business planning with Glenn McQueenie. So we will get you a date and a time. Hopefully we should have it by the end of today, actually. Um, the other neat thing that's coming up, which I'm going to let Dylan speak to, I know he's been sitting here so quietly today, which is not normal for Dylan, but you know, I think it's because I haven't fed him his lunch yet or given him enough energy balls or something like that. So I'll let him speak for just a minute here. So I'll, I'll touch on a couple of things we have coming out of the pipeline. So as I'm sure a number of you are aware, um, I'm sure Mark can even touch on this as well, but as of, I believe it's October, we're able to open a personal real estate corporation. And there can be a number of different advantages to a personal real estate corporation. And there also could be some disadvantages that we want to make sure you're all aware of. So on November 3rd at 1.30, we will be having a power team led by Per Homer will come in and will speak to us around some of the pros and cons of a personal real estate corporation. Um, it may not be for you right now, although I would recommend that it is on your business plan um, given a certain GCI volume or a certain number of transactions. So there's a couple different pros and cons that Pear will speak on as well as we have an accountant coming on and a lawyer coming on. So there's going to be a 30 minute presentation by Pear on, on what he's seen from pros and cons and giving you a summary of where that's at, as well as a question and answer period uh, that we can all use um, to ask a lawyer and an accountant about all the specifics on whether a personal real estate corporation is for you or not. Uh, so definitely, definitely, definitely stay tuned to the Facebook page. We will be sharing out some graphics, uh, hopefully later on today, if not tomorrow, on how you can go about registering for that. It will be done virtually through Zoom. Um, and we will also be continuing on a monthly basis <laughs> with updates. So because this is so new, there's, there's a number of accountants out there that actually aren't even doing it yet because it's still changing. Um, I've been standing by very patiently on my end to say, okay, where are we at, where are we at? So I wanted to ensure that we continue to support all of our agents um, through this. I'm the OP of two market centers, one in Portland and one in Phoenix. My sales team in Portland, Oregon, has expanded into over 96 cities across the country. Sorry about that. And so what we're going to do is ongoing once a month, we will continue to have a prep update and it will be an hour session once a month where we'll give, we'll go over a high level of what it is. And then we'll go over any updates that may be applicable and then have question and answer. So 
similar to if you have questions regarding uh, writing offers and whatnot with that you can reach out to Mark anytime, we want to have a resource available for you so that you have a team around you and team within that if you decide you want to open a, a personal real estate corporation for, for some tax advantages or for protection, whatever liability protection you may want, that that is available to you. So that will be coming next Tuesday, November 3rd at 1.30 p.m. And there will be a link that will come out through the Facebook page that we'll send out to each of you as well. Uh, I would definitely recommend uh, 200,000, 150, 200,000 gross commission is probably the minimum they're recommending for the most part, but it really comes down to what your net is uh, to make tax advantage of it. And uh, so definitely come on, come on and check it out, learn more about it. We will have ongoing uh, sessions once a month where we'll update you on any personal real estate corporation information required. Awesome, thank you. And then daily, if you're looking for something to, to do a training on, there's always live training through KW Connect. There's the link there. Uh, and you're welcome to click on that. And it's, it's all free training on there. And it's coming straight from uh, Keller Williams. Okay, I'm going to stop that share there. Super. Bold is on right now. Yeah, on the call right now. Who is uh, his enrolled in Bold that's currently on the call right now? Lizanne, yes, Rory. I'm about to go. Today is a great day to pause. Who's that? Someone, oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, okay, so we've got a few bold attendees. Anyone wanna share anything that they've, uh, they've done so far or an aha they've had so far, something they can share with the group? Rory O'Brien? <laughs> I was just going to say today's yeah, my first is. day. Today is my first day because last week was busy and my partner was away. So I missed last Thursday. So I'm catch up time. I'm going to be double bold today. Okay, great. The, ben the benefit about the way we're doing bold right now virtually is that we can actually catch up on it. Yeah. So if you did miss last week, you can go back and rewatch those sessions and partake in the activities that you need to do in order to make sure that you get the most out of bold, which is unique to what we're doing this year with it being virtual. So um, definitely, definitely, definitely check it out. And you still can join, I believe. I'm pretty sure you can. We still can get you online and get you access if it is something you want to apply to your business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's it's very different because the first session I was in a dentist chair. I had it plugged in, but you can listen to it with all sorts of other stuff going on. So on one hand, it's convenient, but on the other hand, you don't focus quite the same way. And you also know in the back of your head, I can go back and re-listen to it. So I, I found the first couple of ones, because I like Rory, it's been busy. I've sort of half paid attention. Um, it's great because you can go download all the materials and stuff, but I have to go back and listen to it too. Can we move the- And the big the, emphasis on- the uh, it is a problem because it does conflict on the Tuesdays because they're Tuesdays and and Thursdays. So it'd be great if we could move our office meeting like back an hour from from one thirty to one so that there is no conflict. But just a thought. I'm taking note of that. Thanks, Lizanne. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Did anyone see that? Or does anyone have any new listings that they want to share with the rest of the group? Adrian, oh, I just have a quick question. Did anyone see the email that went out yesterday about the government offering the SIBA loan for individuals now? So like, did, they were, like, they were, like they were doing with the um, small businesses is giving that uh, $40,000 loan, but then you get to keep 10,000 of it at the end basically. And now they're offering it to individuals. So I, I mean, most of us are probably okay and don't need the loan, but if the government's handing out a free $10,000, why wouldn't we capitalize on it? Right. So just sure, unsure if anyone looked into that. They also released something a week or two ago where uh, there was an increase to the amount. Um, so we'll get some more information and we'll reshare it on the Facebook page. So stay tuned to that if it is something that you need or some more information you're looking forward to. Uh, if we don't have the answer, we'll get it for you right away. Awesome. Anything else anyone wants to share? Any listings they want to share with the group? Was that just a fly above your head, Brianna? Hi, I want to talk. No, hi, I want to share a listing. <laughs> um, I just wanted to talk about the listing that we have currently that um, is for sale. It's a beautiful townhouse, freehold. 
three bedroom, two and a half bathroom. It's on Grand Avenue, which is um, near Park Lawn and Lakeshore. Um, two car parking, ground level walk out to your private fence backyard. And all of the non-sexy stuff like roof, furnace, AC, et cetera, has just been replaced. So, and they're all owned, which is nice. Um, we're meant to be having offers today and we don't think that we're going to have any. So like, come on, people, get your people through. Let's do this. <laughs> $9.98. Super. Anyone else want to share a listing? All right, we're on Quiet Tuesday. Thanks. Adrian, uh, yes, could, I, Mark? could I mention could I mention one more thing about the mere postings that I think is kind of important? I, I don't know. I have like I, I need less than a minute. Is that okay? Sure. Uh, I don't know how many of you are dealing with them, but in case you do, quite often they're going to ask the sellers are for the deposit to be kept with their lawyer. Um, I would suggest that you at least try to keep your buyer's deposit in neighborhoods trust account instead. Most of the time, they're not going to give you a hard time. They'll say, okay, fine. And your buyer's money is protected better in our trust account because we have the act to contend with. Lawyers have different criteria and, and it's possible the money might be dispersed without your buyer really wanting it to be dispersed if things, if the transaction doesn't complete. So if you can try to get into neighborhoods trust account rather than the seller's lawyers. That's all I wanted to say. Great. Thank you. Super. Anything else to add today? Yeah. One more thing I will, I will speak to. I actually went on my first uh, wealth building Wednesday, not too long ago. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are aware of it. Although Jason Abrams and, uh, and, and some of the, the leaders in our Keller Williams community are now featuring wealth building Wednesdays every Wednesday. And it's, it's really informative and insightful to show different ways that we can generate wealth. Um, they talk about profit share. They talk about real estate investing, some different real estate investment strategies that would make sense for you or for your client. They have talked about different ways to increase the number of transactions with that, with, with these. Um, so we're going to share that link as well to the Facebook page. You're going to start to see a lot more communication on the Facebook page. As I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, um, trying to give you guys as much information as possible so that you can really kind of take advantage of, of the, uh, the training and the information that we have available. Um, there's so many different ways to build wealth within this organization and, and they touch on it uh, every week during Wealth Building Wednesdays. So it is open to everyone. It is done through KW Connect, I believe, uh, but we will share all the information uh, following at some point in time this week for you to get in. Um, and it will be going on every single Wednesday with Jason Abrams and, uh, and head office. Awesome. Great. Thanks everybody for being here today. Have a great Tuesday, a great rest of your week. We'll be back with a, a note from Dylan and Adrian and updates on Friday. And we will see you again shortly. Thank you for being here. Bye. Bye. Have a great day.